Hello and welcome to this webcast lecture about Karl Marx, the German philosopher, economist and revolutionary who, with the help and support of his co-author Frederick Engels, wrote the Communist Manifesto in 1848 and Das Kapital, a multi-volume work on the historical development of capitalism, which was published between 1867 and 1894 in several volumes. The final volumes of Das Kapital were published after Marx's death and were edited by Engel. Marx was an economist. He actually had very little regard for the subject of philosophy uh, and his political theory, according to subsequent critics, is somewhat underdeveloped and perhaps even a little naive. So we can start really with his economics uh, as they are set out in Das Kapital and in another book, The Theory of Wages, Prices and Profits. Here he sets out a version of the labour theory of value which was first enunciated by David Ricardo. Labour theory of value says that long term the exchange value of all goods and commodities is dependent upon the amount of labour power that's been expended in producing them and not on their simple scarcity. Uh, I discussed that in the webcast lecture on David Ricardo, the idea why a bucket of water and a bucket of diamonds might be priced differently in the desert and, uh, uh, and uh, on the one hand and in England on the other hand um, all of that we if you if you're not clear about the labor theory of value then go back and have a listen to that uh, Marx tried to make economics central to the understanding of human life and of the development of society he sees economic activity as the motive power of history uh, for Aristotle you might think uh, for Aristotle man really is the rational animal the per the creature that can think, that can use logic. For Plato, man is the political animal. For Kant, man is the moral animal, the, the creature that knows the difference between right and wrong innately. For Hegel, man is the historic animal um, who knows that he's got a past and speculates about the future. And for Marx, man is all of these. Above all, man is the productive animal, the creature that creates its own conditions of existence. Now, Marx and Engels claimed that their method was scientific. They criticised other socialists. The socialist movement had um, taken on its modern form, really, in France in the 1820s and 1830s, and socialism was widely discussed. Marx was not a socialist in uh, the early years of his life when he was a student. He, he adopted socialist politics when he was in what amounted to exile in in Paris in the 1830s. But he denounced all the French socialists as utopians. They had these kind of pipe dreams about ideal societies. He claimed, uh, Marx claimed, that his socialism was scientific socialism, and a good deal of his book, The Communist Manifesto, is spent criticising the existing socialist thinkers for their lack of understanding of the, of the reality of historical development, and essentially for their utopian wishful thinking. So Marx claimed that his method was scientific and you have to grant the fact that he did amass huge amounts of evidence on which he based his conclusions and he did most of this in the 1840s and 1850s when he truly was in exile. Uh, he'd been banned from uh, writing and living first in Germany and then in Belgium and ended up living in England. Famously he used to visit the British Library uh, day in day out and there he availed himself of the massive amount of uh, empirical data that the bureaucratic British state had begin to had begun to collect since about the 1820s uh, and uh, with increasing systematization through the 1830s and 1840s so the operation of the new poor law that was brought into force in 1834 for example was based on collecting huge amounts of data for parliamentary commissions this data was kept and it dealt with wages prices commodity prices prices demographic information the age at which people got married um the the, the, pr the price of uh, bread the the price of housing etc etc and marx dived into this information and based all his conclusions about the way in which society was developing on this mass of data. It's really the first economist, perhaps even really the first social thinker of any note, who based his conclusions to such a large extent on empirical data. So moving on, this tells us something about Marx's philosophical method, or perhaps it's more accurately uh, accurate to say his stance on philosophy. He was not keen on philosophy, and he wrote a book called The Poverty of Philosophy, which was ridiculing and satirising the French socialists, 
Proudhon had written a book called The Philosophy of Poverty. Uh, in The Philosophy of Poverty and, uh, sorry, in The Poverty of Philosophy and in other works such as The German Ideology, Marx ridicules the idea of pure reason that you can work things out simply by cognitive effort in the manner of René Descartes. That I think, therefore, I am, that you can speculate and, and, and arrive at valid conclusions from reasoning. In this respect, Marx is rather like David Hume, uh, who rejected any kind of conclusions based on reasoning that were not based on empirical fact. So Marx had a very low opinion, generally, of philosophy. Um, he calls it ideology, meaning a sort of worldview that uh, is very often a self-justification for the existing uh, social setup for the status quo. So he sees philosophy as intrinsically a conservative activity which justifies the morals and ethics of the existing society. But it's all a lot of hot air that's designed to moralise and make morally right whatever the existing conventions of society are. Marx's view of religion is very like this. He sees um, clearly sees Catholicism as sort of the ideology of the feudal um, social system and Protestantism and Methodism as essentially the ideology of the capitalist society. Anyway, despite this, Marx said that he was a follower of Hegel, uh, that uh, he read the philosophy of Hegel and claimed to understand it, which is a remarkable achievement in its own right. He was associated in Germany with a movement of uh, essentially a liberal, not socialist movement, a liberal called the Jung Hegelians. The leading figure in the Jung Hegelian movement was a man called Ludwig Feuerbach, who stated uh, an idea which would be very commonplace now, that God is created in the image of man. The claim of the Bible is that uh, uh, God created man in his own image. Well, Feuerbach simply inverts that and says, no, our idea about God is simply based on what we know about mankind. Uh, places existing in other realms, that uh, the Garden of Eden is a real place, and the Garden of Eden would be an ideal society. So put simply for Feuerbach and his followers, God is made in the image of man. Marx accepted this idea, uh, but in one of his earlier writings, the thesis on Feuerbach, uh, Marx wrote that philosophers have interpreted the world in various ways, but the point is to change it. He disagreed with Feuerbach that the world would naturally evolve towards a perfect society once that once people simply realised that their fate was in their own hands. That wasn't enough. It was necessary for people via political means to create such a, an ideal society. 